Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yo to both fam, it's the director. Chargers fans, we're getting so close to the NFL draft. And every day that goes by, I start wondering to myself what the outcome is going to be for the Chargers. What deep strategy is this team using in order to benefit the most from what they have in the fifth position in this year's draft, as well as how they're going to kick off the Jim Harbaugh era in L.A.? I think there's a lot to take into account here, man. And I think it's going to be a lot more exciting, maybe even complicated than any of us even realize. So today's video, I'm actually going to be focusing on hot takes for the Chargers in the NFL draft in particular. Some sizzling hot takes, mind you, because I think this is going to be one of the bigger, one of the more exciting, one of the more shocking years that we've seen as Chargers fans when it comes to the draft because of all the new stuff being ushered in. As a matter of fact, I'll give you guys a little taste here before we even run the intro. I think my first hot take is that J.J. McCarthy may be the key to our most successful draft in 2024. Does that mean we're going to draft the kid absolutely not but what Jim Harbaugh has set up in praising this man and finding all of you know the uh, the uh, uh, hype revolving around JJ McCarthy and getting other teams excited about him it may push JJ up into the top five which would create a huge opportunity for the Chargers to maximize their value uh, with a trade down uh, uh, even with other guys falling to them at pick number five like Marvin Harrison Jr. so with With that, guys, let's get into my full list of Chargers sizzling hot takes for the 2024 NFL Draft. Before we do, shout out to the sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use code DIRECTOR to match your first deposit up to $100. Get in on the action. Newcomers, check out this code here or this special here. It's a great way to support the channel. Have some fun along the way. Before we do kick off, hit us up with a like and sub. If you do enjoy this Chargers content, the small amount of time you guys take, hit the like, sub, bell notification. Helps me out a lot. Let's get into it. Lights, camera. Action. My sizzling hot takes for the Chargers 2024 NFL draft season, which has a lot revolving around Jim Harbaugh, Greg Roman, the new offense coming in, the new defensive system coming in. The Chargers really need to get it right in 2024. We have a lot of players that need to enter the fold to create a new culture, a new system, again, a new offense and defense. Pretty much the only thing I suspect that's going to look really similar is our special teams. Uh, uh, And other than that, we're looking at a completely new team for the Chargers who've been bringing in guys from the Ravens to help us out with the Greg, you know, Roman offense the Joe Hortiz relationships, but more importantly, building this team in the image that Jim Harbaugh sees fit. And as I alluded to at the top of the video, this J.J. McCarthy situation is quite fascinating. To to, uh, expand on what I was talking about at the opening here, um, J.J. McCarthy, who I viewed as a first-round quarterback, be it later first-round talent, has been praised to hell and back from Jim Harbaugh. And, of course, you're going to expect the head coach you know, of the quarterback that went and won the national championship just last year to praise him as much as possible. But it felt like there was maybe an underlying strategy uh, uh, inter, you know, interweaved into that whole situation. I feel like Jim Harbaugh really wanted to emphasize to other teams around the league that J.J. McCarthy is worth a top five selection in the NFL draft. And of course, this affects the Chargers, seeing as we have pick number five. And if J.J. McCarthy, again, were to go in the top five, one of two things is going to happen, in my opinion. J.J. goes at four with a trade, you know, uh, with the, let's say, Minnesota Vikings and Arizona Cardinals. There goes J.J. at four. We got four straight quarterbacks back to back to back to back. That puts Marvin Harrison Jr. firmly in the lap of the Chargers at five. That already is a huge win. But if, let's say, the Cardinals stick and pick, grab Marvin Harrison Jr., then all of a sudden, you got an opportunity to trade down if you're the Chargers and maybe grab that King's Ransom From the Minnesota Vikings, that includes two first-round picks and then some change. 
And I think J.J. McCarthy's kind of the key to that whole thing. And it feels like the moment Jim Harbaugh signed his contract with the Los Angeles Chargers, he's been putting this narrative into motion. Yes, I do think there's some genuine, you know, words and talk behind his praise for J.J. McCarthy, but I, ha I can't help but believe that there's some strategy at play here to make sure J.J. Uh, goes well above what everybody expected him to in the draft to help benefit the Chargers draft position. All right, so that's hot take number one. Let's move into a new hot take here, too. Man, I got these all written down. I'm excited to share these with you guys. Chargers trade down and still get a monster wide receiver. Let's say let's steal, they still get a, they still get a wide receiver in the first round. This is something I think Chargers fans, we've talked about a little bit on this channel. I think it's been around online a little bit as to how this could still work. But it's something I think the Chargers are definitely going to be entertaining if the quarterback situation does fall like a lot of us thinking it's going to be. We think it's going to be three, maybe four straight quarterbacks to start this draft in the first five picks. This is going to leave teams like, again, the Minnesota Vikings as well as the New York Giants in a position where one of them is going to have to trade up to get the last of like the cream of the crop of this draft classic quarterback. Sure, the Vikings trade down is very, very enticing, but the Giants trade down might be even more enticing depending on what the Chargers want in the first round. If they want one of those blue chip wide receivers, you're still going to have the chance to get one of those guys if you trade with the Giants. The Giants aren't going to want the Chargers to trade with the Vikings as that will make them lose their chance at a quarterback. So if they want to trade up and secure their position, I think the Chargers would benefit from an extra third, maybe second round pick to secure that for the Giants which would leave the Chargers with still their pick of, let's say, Neighbors or Adunze at six, as well as an extra pick in the third or second round as well. I think, to me, that's one of my favorite scenarios. But even if the Chargers do decide to trade down with the Minnesota Vikings, grab a different talent at pick number 11, and then turn around and get a different wide receiver at 23, there's still going to be guys like Mitchell and McConkie still available at the end of the first round who could clearly carry the torch for the Chargers as wide receiver one into the future. So let's keep that in mind. I think the Chargers, as much as we all want to see that wide receiver prospect at the top of the first round, I think it's still possible with a trade down. But even if not, I think the Bolts would still be wise to grab one at the later half of the first round and grab some extra capital along the way. My hot take number three. I think the Chargers make it out of this mock draft with multiple trades, not just one trade, which a lot of us are expecting them to maybe trade down at some point. I think they're going to end up doing this multiple times, right? A trade down in the first round, again, that's on the table. It's something a lot of us expect that is, is pretty high on the list of priorities for the Chargers if they get the right offer. But what about a trade down in the second round or the third round? The Chargers do hold quite a bit of ammunition here because let me remind you, the Bolts who have pick number five are at the top of every single round in the NFL draft, which means any talent that falls into the draft, you know, after that, they're going to be hot commodities for another team that maybe wants to trade up with the Chargers at pick number five, who at this point would be hauling draft picks any chance that they can get. So sure, a trade down in the first round I think is definitely on the table, but I'm actually up for a trade down in the second round, maybe even third round, to try and maximize on that fifth position as much as possible because this is a very stacked draft when it comes to talent, when it comes to depth, and if the Chargers can grab more capital while also still getting around the guys that they want in those rounds anyway, I think it's a very good strategy to go into it. Okay, And the last thing I'll mention with this hot take is let's not forget Draft capital is also ammunition in terms of trading up as well. If the Bolts feel compelled to move up and grab a guy that's fallen or grab a guy that's, you know, in that range that they're willing to pay that price for, I think the Chargers, if they grab enough ammunition, will be able to do that. And that kind of helps me transition into my next hot take. This hot take I actually labeled as why not us? Okay, and let me explain this to you guys. I've seen a model in a lot of mock drafts for several other teams that kind of got me excited at the idea of what 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 would, if the Chargers decide to exercise this draft strategy. So I've again I've seen this mock to other teams. Why not us? Why don't we try this? Now imagine a world where the Chargers do trade down. We get the two first round picks from the Vikings, right? We're excited. We got huge value. We're getting ready to see who's available at eleven. But lo and behold, behind the scenes, the Chargers. We're planning to maybe trade back up all along while also getting the extra first round pick. Let's see who falls to the bottom of the top 10 players in this draft. 
because trading into a top 10 position rather than a top five is so much cheaper in terms of capital. You can still get a guy. But what if the Chargers, and again, I've seen this mocked several other teams. I don't want to see, hear people say, no, nah, we're being biased. No, we, we've seen this everywhere. What if the Chargers trade down, get those two first round picks? They see how the board starts to fall past the fifth, past the fifth pick and decide, hey, it's time to go back up and get our guy. What if they trade up and get a guy like Brock Bowers? They jump the New York Jets at pick number nine with the Bears and they get Brock Bowers at nine or whatever, whatever that position might be. I think that's still on the table. It wouldn't cost nearly as much. You can trade that number 11 pick and like a third or fourth round pick to make that happen. But what I also see is something very exciting to think about. And I just saw this on a mock draft. I forget the channel. I think it was TPS. They had the Chargers trading up to the eight position with the Atlanta Falcons, right? So they sent picks number 11 and 69, which is the third pick, to get, I think it was Malik Neighbors in their draft. I see Romo Dunze more likely being available at that spot. But just imagine if the Chargers get an extra first round pick and Roma Dunze, Malik Neighbors, one of those guys. Why not us? We've seen the Cardinals do that in recent seasons. Why don't the Chargers trade down, see who falls, and then trade right back up to get one of the premium weapons in the first round? I think the Chargers could do something like that this year. Again, maybe it's not in the first round. Maybe it's in the third or fourth round. But why not us? Why not be one of those splashy teams? Sure, we don't have a third, but all of a sudden, we got another first-round pick in this draft, which is pretty exciting to think about. Why not us? Why not us? I've seen the cards mocked with this 100 million times with Marvin Harrison Jr. Why not us? Why not us? My next hot take, and one that I've, I've been pushing the narrative for a little bit more in the past couple of videos, one that is really starting to grip me as a Chargers fan is like, hey, this is a solid reality at this point. Um, I got the Chargers shocking Chargers fans in day two with the selection of a linebacker. Let's say even round two, right? There's going to be a lot of need for the Chargers all over the roster, right? You're going to see guys, maybe if the Chargers, let's say they do get neighbors or Marvin Harrison, whatever, in the first round, they stick and pick, whatever, no trade down. And we're looking for a corner. We're looking for defensive line. We're looking for other talent. Um, what if they end up going linebacker? I think there's a solid shot of it because I believe that linebacker in this defense is hugely, hugely underrated. I think Jesse Minter needs a dog here that can be the leader of this defense in the future with Derwin James. I love Denzel Perryman. I love, you know, Dan Henley. I think that combination should work for this season. But if you want this defense to be firing in all cylinders, you need somebody special at that linebacker position to pair up with Derwin James. The, you know, as he rotates in and out of the uh, out of the out of the box, and there's a couple of guys in day two that really have my attention. Edron Cooper, for sure, is probably the number one guy I'm looking for. Him and Peyton Wilson. If Wilson wasn't injured, I think it would be Wilson. Either way, those are guys that I'm I'm highly looking for in the second round. But don't forget about Junior Colson, who's been visiting with the Chargers. I think Cooper did as well. These dudes are exactly the kind of linebackers that you're looking for to operate and run this defense. And as we were talking about it before, I think the Chargers could end up trading down in the second round, maybe even multiple rounds, whatever. This is the scenario where I feel like the Chargers, they get aggressive, they trade down in the second round, right? Um, they inquire an extra third, fourth round pick, whatever the case may be. And they end up drafting a linebacker. And I think a guy like Cooper or Colson could be found pretty realistically in the middle or, or late part of the second round. If you can grab some value and still get that position, I'm very, very about that. But I do think the fact that the Chargers are targeting a linebacker is going to shock some people. I think it's something that they're very, very high on that they don't speak too much on. That's going to leave a lot of us with our jaws on the, on the floor saying, whoa, you know, there was another corner right there. or There's another receiver right, right there or whatever. Linebacker is a pretty big part of this team, too. And I think we're going to see that reflected in the draft at some point. Keep that in mind. All right. Next up, oh, this hot take is going to get some of you guys fired up. It really is, dude. This is something that I think 99% of online, you know, uh, sports talk, you know, channels and other Chargers channels and Chargers news outlets, I think 99% of them are going to disagree with me here. So like, hold on to your butts, all right? I think the Chargers will shock the world by not selecting an offensive lineman until day three in the NFL draft. Hold hold your horses, everybody. I get it. I, it feels super unlikely, like it's a hot take. 
Sue me. <laughs> but this is what I'm thinking, okay? There is so much talent at offensive line in terms of depth all over this draft. And the Chargers, who have Jim Harbaugh and Joe Hortiz, who both come from backgrounds that are really good at identifying talent at this position, mind you, the, the, the Michigan Wolverines and, you know, the Baltimore Ravens have done some of their best work with the lesser known guys. The Ravens in particular have found some of their best linemen in the third and fourth rounds. What if the Chargers decide to grab their skill position guys in the first three rounds and then go for broke with some of the uh, better talent and, and the better you know evaluations that they feel confident in at offensive line in the fourth, fifth, and beyond rounds? And let me explain this a little better. I know that was a little all over the place, right? Let's say it turns out Jim Harbaugh likes the potential of our offensive line now. Because let's be honest with ourselves, okay? This isn't the worst that we've seen the Chargers offensive line in the past decade, all right? It's actually not in a bad situation. The left side looks pretty secure. You know, you got Zion. Uh, you got, uh, uh, of course, Slater. Uh, the center position might need a little bit of work. The right side of the line is probably where you're looking to draft some talent. But we still have Trey Pipkins out there, who's being paid, what, like $9 million bucks. You still got Jamari Sawyer, who could see a maybe an uptick. Uh, with this Jim Harbaugh system. And let mind you, that's probably one of the biggest things that I want to remind of everybody. Everybody on the line regressed last season because it didn't really feel like um, uh, the offensive scheme, did, it really didn't favor their strengths. Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh, they're going to get the very freaking best out of their offensive line. And we've seen some pretty good potential out of these guys, including Trey Pipkins. So if the Chargers and Jim Harbaugh feel confident that, hey, the offensive line ain't bad, right? We may be able to grab some guys later in the fourth or fifth round that don't need to start right away, that have the potential to be dogs in the future, or maybe even dogs this season, however you want to slice it. It may influence the Chargers to trust their expertise in drafting and identifying offensive line talent where they can go, hey, man, we need that receiver in the first three rounds. We need that corner in the first three rounds. We need that defensive lineman in the first three rounds, linebacker, whatever. We're going to trust our gut. We're going to get our guys in the fourth round when it comes to offensive line. And the way I think it might go down, you see Cedric Van Pran here. I think he could be an excellent fourth round target for the Chargers at center. He's a perfect fit in terms of, you know, system and scheme uh, in running that offensive line. He's an extremely smart football player. I think I would start with center because some of your best value is going to be found there. But heck, if you wanted to start tackle, I think one of my favorite targets in the fourth round, and which, by the way, we have two fourth round picks, so go ahead and, and slice that how you will. Maybe we do go back to back on offensive line in the fourth round. Um, Matt Gonsalves, one of my favorite guys in the fourth round as well, because he and any other, I think if it weren't for the ACL, right, which is, of course, is going to be a concern, I think he would be more of a, I don't know, a date, uh, uh, round three kind of guy instead of round four, maybe even early round three. But again, the Chargers have Trey Pipkins, so we don't need to shove Matt Gonsalves in at right tackle right away. And Gonsalves is a great fit. He's perfect. And this will be a guy that can roll out in Trey Pipkins' position next season and see a lot of success. So maybe the Chargers, they understand their expertise at the position. They like what they see. They can find some value. Heck, maybe even beyond the fourth round. There's some guys later that I like that maybe, you know, Harbaugh and these guys, they have dudes that they love as well. Nathan Thomas out of Louisiana, the, the Raging Cajuns, right? He looks awesome. He looks like a nice power guy. Uh, and maybe even another Michigan guy like Carson Barnhart, right? You can find him in the sixth or seventh round. These are dudes that Harbaugh and, and Hortiz will have a better perspective on than any of us. And their confidence in those guys and their 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 ability to, de to develop those guys may influence their decision not to grab an O-lineman until day three so they can get those skill position guys in the first two days. Isn't that wacky? Isn't that wild? I'm sorry. Some of you guys are really going to hate me for that take. But quite honestly, who knows? Who knows? It's a very deep drafted offensive line. Um, you could, again, just as easily make the argument that they go super early, they take them in the first round, but I think the Chargers and their ability to identify talent at this position, and even more so their ability to develop talent at this position, and also add on top of the fact that the offensive line isn't in the worst position, I think all that adds up to me thinking, hey, they're going to grab value, and I think value in terms of this draft, you're going to see a lot of skill position guys in the first two days. Day three is when I think the Chargers start grabbing that value at offensive line. Again, hot take for a reason, but one that kind of got me excited to even make this video because it is something I could genuinely see happening.
All right, let's move on. Another take that you guys might hate. <laughs> Maybe we should just rename this this video to takes you guys are going to hate by the director. <laughs> yeah, uh, th this next uh, hot take revolves around the running back position, which I'm going to say the Chargers at this point do not draft a running back in 2024. Here come the flaming arrows. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. But this opens up opportunity to draft other guys, other positions. If the Chargers need an offensive lineman and they see talent all over the fourth and fifth round, go for that instead of the running back. You know why? Because the Bolts signed the Ravens, guys. Both of them. We got Gus Edwards, RB1. Gus Bus is going to be carrying the bulk of, of the Chargers running attack this season. And then we just got J.K. Dobbins yesterday, who has an average of, what, five and a half yards per carry when he's healthy. If that pans out, if it turns out like what, what Ryan Matthews was, who was always injured, right? When he went to the Eagles, he was pretty great as a complimentary back to DeMarco Murray for a couple of seasons. If we see a similar result to that and J.K. can stay on the field for like 10, 12 games this season... I think we're in very good hands in terms of our run game and the talent behind it. I think instead of drafting a guy, however, because it doesn't mean that we're not going to get a guy uh, in the draft, or I should say, you know, of the rookies class this season. I just think the Chargers may opt for more of the undrafted free agent kind of crowd instead of a dude that we draft. You can convince me maybe instead of undrafted, it's like a seventh rounder or whatever. But I think the Chargers use that draft capital instead for other positions like offensive line. And again, it's because of the signings we made it at running back this season. Like we, we, we got it, you know, call it as it is. We have Gus. We have JK. We also have Isaiah uh, uh, Spiller. We have um, uh, Elijah Dodson. Like, we, we got running backs. Um, maybe we take a shot at an undrafted free agent guy instead of using draft capital in the later half of the of the NFL draft, you know, and there's guys here that have some potential to go undrafted that some dudes are pretty high on, right? I got George Helani on here right now out of Boise State. He might go undrafted, and some dudes really love this guy in like the fifth or sixth round. You never know who's going to be available out there, and there's going to be running backs just slobbering all over themselves to get to Los Angeles and play with Jim Harbaugh because that system provides the best opportunity to put tape together to be a guy that of the future for a different team and back up RB2, RB3, RB1, whatever. Undrafted feels like a good option for me this season. Not to mention you got guys like Hendrickson next year or Anderson next year. This next season's mock or this next season's NFL draft of running backs look a lot stronger. You imagine Donovan Edwards. We can not just do JH squared, or I guess at this point with the three, uh, uh, because of Justin Herbert, Joe Hortiz, and Jim Harbaugh. We could do the Edwards squared, right? Edwards two times two, two point with Donovan Edwards and Gus Edwards. Because, because those of you guys don't know, Donovan Edwards, a great system fit for the Chargers at running back who plays currently for Michigan. He'll be in the NFL next season, okay? So my point behind all this, I love next year's uh, class of running backs. I think that's going to be a much deeper class. I think there's a lot of talent out there that uh, fits what the Chargers are trying to do. This season, I view as maybe you find your RB2, but it feels like the Chargers just paid for that in J.K. Dobbins. So maybe, just maybe, we don't draft one at all anymore, and we go more for like an undrafted guy to compete with Elijah Dodson. That's kind of where my head's at right now, okay? All right, I can feel the heat already. Here, come, here comes the next hot take, um, one that you guys might be a little bit more on board with. The Chargers double dip at wide receiver and defensive back, all right? This is where Chargers fans and I probably, you know, align, coexist, whatever. I think those two positions need a lot of help, okay? And a lot of people might say, oh, the Chargers are going to be more of a running team. We don't need two wide receivers. We probably do. I don't know what's going to happen with Josh Palmer next season. I don't. I want to expect him to be the super solid, consistent target for Justin Herbert. Maybe he becomes a slack guy. Who knows? But he got one more year with us, okay? Quinton Johnston, coin flip. I think he'll do a lot better with uh, Jim Harbaugh, but who knows? Right. Let's say we get a first round guy like uh, Malik Neighbors. Let's say the Chargers make it out of round one. Malik Neighbors, he might need another guy to compliment him at some point. Maybe even dudes in terms of depth. So imagine like a guy like Neighbors and Johnny Wilson, the six seven freaking nature out of FSU. Right. He can be the outside guy. You got Quinton in the slot, Josh Palmer in the slot, whatever. You got Neighbors as wide receiver one. Who knows, right? And then X receiver maybe could be more of a Johnny Wilson role because, uh, of course. X doesn't always mean just wide receiver one. It also can mean what you want from that position. Anyway, point being, double dipping a, a wide receiver, not a bad option. What if it's Romo Dunze, who's that X guy, and Malik Washington in the slot, 
right? Those are two very big talents that could round out. The, the Chargers wide receiver room would go from pretty bad, maybe one of the worst in the league right now, to maybe like a top 15, top 10 overnight with selections like that. Because just because we're a running team doesn't mean we're not going to pass the ball. We got Justin Herbert for crying out loud. The Chargers are going to want to pass the ball as much as they can, right? But they're just going to make sure it's not all on Herbert anymore. We're bringing in the run game to help balance things out a little bit. And the same can be said in terms of a corner or DB, I should say. I'll say defensive back. I think the Chargers could double dip here as well. We need help. Okay, Asante Samuel Jr., he's pretty good, but he can't do it alone, right? In terms of DB, of course, Derwin James Lowe here, pretty solid back there too. But imagine if we went Nate Wiggins and Max Melton. How, all of a sudden, like we were talking about with the wide receiver room, all of a sudden that those corner or that, that corner position goes from like eh, maybe bottom 15 or bottom you know 20 to like top half in the league. Big difference makers. What if it's a guy like Sainra still, who I love to you know monitor to uh, patrol in the slot, and then you get a guy like Cole Bishop to complement at safety. You can move around Derwin and and, and Alohi Gilman a little bit more. I think both of those positions are subject to double dip, and maybe at this point both of them could be. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, getting close to the end here, guys, my next hot take, and this is one that just sort of entered my radar, you know, my, my vision here, because it's not something I at all entertained up until literally this morning or yesterday. Um, a division trade is officially on the table, okay? And you guys are looking at, at uh, Pat Sertan on here thinking, oh, you know, there's absolutely, especially if you're a Broncos fan, you're just like, ha ha, think again, buddy, that ain't happening in a million years. You know what? Sean Payton did this morning. You know, his butt woke up this and decided to do on live TV or wherever he was being interviewed. You know what he said? He said, well, we're desperate. Okay, we're willing to do anything. It'll include this year's first, next year's first. We'll throw in Pat Sertan if it means we can get a quarterback. All of a sudden, like, I lean forward, right? I got that game controller. It's no longer slouched back. You're leaning forward like, okay, um... You, 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 you had my curiosity, now you have my attention, right? It's it, Really, that is something you have to entertain. A bona fide top four, three cornerback in the league, plus the first round of the, of the Broncos and the first round next year, like, that's something we have to think about. Because when trading with a division rival, especially if they're going to go get a quarterback, you've got to rob them blind. And this feels like a rob them blind kind of trade. I we We would have to consider that. Because at 12, you can still get a guy. You can get Fuanga. You can get Brock Bowers. You can get a, another corner if you needed to or a wide receiver like you know Brian Thomas or whatever. You could still get a great talent at 12. But that wide receiver, that that bona fide, already paid for and and, and locked in and proven wide, or a cornerback, excuse me, cornerback in the league, that is something that I think would make me want to pull the trigger there. All right? Uh... Top three hot take, not top three, there's not any order, but uh, last three here. I have the Chargers, uh, what's this labeled? Second round monster value. Okay, this one is actually kind of important. Like we were talking about earlier, the Chargers who have position five are going to have a lot of talent falling to them in various rounds. You know, at 37, they're at top of the second round. Somebody's going to fall to them, right? At uh, uh, 69 in the third round, somebody's going to fall to them. Well, I think in particular, the second round is going to hold a lot of power for this team, okay? I think, and this is the hot take part of this, I think the Chargers are going to see one of these guys still available at 37. Johnny Newton, who for whatever reason keeps falling in mock drafts, I don't know why. Maybe there's red flags that we don't know about, but if he's still there, holy crap on a cracker, that would be awesome. I think Johnny Newton, JPJ, uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, uh, Lad McConkey, or, or Kool-Aid McKinstry, I think one of those guys are going to be there. And that is something that just gets me giddy. <laughs> Quite honestly, dude, like that's huge. That's huge value right there. I would take any one of those guys and be super excited about the Chargers' future. But additionally to that, because it's not just the opportunity to draft one of those dudes, that tremendously strengthens what you're going to get back if you decide to trade down. Because like we said at linebacker, if we wanted to get Junior Colson, if we wanted to get Edron James, or Edron Cooper, excuse me, uh, you're probably looking to trade down. I don't know if I'm wanting to spend 
a top second round pick on a linebacker. But if we trade down, let's say somebody's desperate for a Johnny Newton, somebody's desperate for a McConkey, a JPJ, a Kool-Aid, and they trade up and we get an extra, you know, uh, of course we'll get the second round pick, but we get an extra third and maybe some change. Then you go out and get your linebacker. You have more ammunition in those later rounds as well. I'm about it. I'm definitely about it. I'm definitely about it. You could also convince me to stick pick, grab one of those top guys and be happy with it. But I don't know. It's something to think about. I think round two could end up being a very, very important round for the Chargers when it comes to trade and when it comes to value. I think round two is kind of that circle and bold underline kind of round that I want you guys to pay attention to. All right. Next up, I think Chargers are not done at tight end. A lot of people think that the Chargers are off the table for Brock Bowers. We're off the table for, you know, Jatavian Sanders and Cade Stover and all those guys. No, no. I think the Chargers, they've been doing their homework on tight end. It's something I still think that they're going to want to look at in the draft. And they find some value. I think they're going to take it. They brought in guys like, Jer I think they brought in Jared Wiley. Um, but more than likely, I think they I see them taking more of a Harbaugh guy in the mid to late rounds. I think A.J. Barner is actually a big one I think we should take uh, keep an eye on as far as like a run-blocking tight end in the later rounds. So just keep that in mind. Chargers not done a tight end. And to wrap up this video, maybe my favorite of the hot takes, one that I think I have a lot of faith in, one that I think that Chargers fans would be very excited about, one that would really make this draft one to remember for the fan base is that I think the Chargers end up with more than 10 picks this season. Yes, that means we're starting at 11 for me. And that's where I'm going to ask you guys in the comment section below, over or under 11 and a half picks for the Chargers in the 2024 NFL Draft? I think right now we already have nine, right? Because we have the extra fourth and we have the extra seventh on top of the seven that we already have. Um, I think the Chargers, like I mentioned before, we could make multiple trades this season. And I think the Bolts ultimately, if I were to me, if you're just going to ask me straight up, like how many picks do you think the Chargers get this year? Um, just with the way that the Ravens operate, with what we need on the team, with what maybe the Jim Harbaugh mentality could be, I think the Chargers end up with 12 picks this season. There you go. There's the hot take. 12 picks for the Chargers in 2024. And that just carries so much significance in terms of potential, right? Like, wow. Imagine what this team would do with 12 picks. And I don't think 12 picks necessarily means we miss on everybody either. I think there's still an awesome shot that the Chargers make it out with the top three wide receiver like Neighbors, Adunze, or even Harrison and still get that many picks because they're trading down in the second and third rounds. The power of position five, folks. It's going to make an effect this year. This season and this draft is so jam-packed with talent that having a top of every round pick is going to be powerful this year and i think joe hortiz is going to fleece some teams out of some picks because of that power that we have this year you got to kick off your career as a gm with a bang you got jim harbaugh in the building there's loaded talent all over the draft let's get some guys in here and not miss out on the talent along the way that's how you win that's why i love scenarios like some of the ones that we mentioned at the top where the chargers still get away with a guy like Roma Dunze, as well as an extra first round pick from the Vikings because of the way they navigated the phones. I see that as something that honestly could very well happen this year. Guys, it's going to be a good year. It's going to be a good year. We're so close to the NFL draft. What, we're like a week away at this point. Get excited. We got more mock drafts coming at you. We got more, you know, shows coming at you. And of course, get ready for the live draft reaction coming up on the 25th. I think it's 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, be ready. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun, fun time. I'm very excited. And of course, we're not just going to watch the Chargers pick and leave. We're going to be anticipating who's falling to the Chargers in the, in the second round. Because remember, second round is where it's at in terms of value this season. All right. Well, with that, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been the director. If you like what you saw here, hit us up with the like and sub. On your way out. We'll see you next time. And as always, bolt up and stay frosty. Oh, dude. Dude, give me some trade. Give me 12 players this year, man. That'd be hot. That'd be hot.